Hi, early start. Uh, welcome to task six. So if you're watching this, I hope that you shared task four with Cody and me on Drive. Um, go back to task four and watch how to share on that video tutorial if you haven't done that yet. Also, task five, we still have a lot, a lot of people who haven't completed that, submitted it, shared it with me on Drive. So in order to complete task five, you have to do it on Drive. This is not something you're submitting on Blackboard Learn. So again, please go back to the task five tutorial and click through how to share with me. I'm gonna walk you through the process again for task six, but this is the third time that we've reviewed this process. So by task six, I really expect everyone to have shared four and five with me. So by the end um, of the week, we'll be wrapping things up. So this is the time to make sure you're um, in the right place, like right where you need to be as far as sharing work, because we just have one more week. So um, if you're feeling a little bit lost, check in with me, check in with Cody, because we need to get you on track before next week. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started with task six. Task six is called What Counts as Writing. I know we've been working with these ideas for a couple of weeks now, um, but what you're gonna do for task six is a culminating writing assignment. You're gonna take parts of what we've been talking about, reading about, writing about, and then try to formulate your own claim. We talked a little bit about claims for task five. So you're gonna be able to practice that again if you didn't quite get to that part. Um, for task five, you're gonna have another chance at that for task six. So I'm asking you to reflect on all the work you've completed so far for early start, summer bridge, and then think about how the assigned text, the readings, um, the videos have shifted your thinking or have helped you focus on um, different themes. So these are just a couple of themes that I pulled. There are many, many more. You can kind of look at any of the readings or videos and figure out what resonates with you the most. If there's any like questions you're still interested in, that might be an indication like, oh, I wanna look deeper into this um, theme. Some of the ones that I uh, identified here are this idea of a literacy crisis. That's from the some of the Lunsford piece, um, looking at multilingualism as an asset, um, thinking through what the term mother tongue means. Um, that could be from Tan's essay or anything else. Thinking about languaging and speaking multiple Englishes, right? So plurals. So again, thinking about what it means to um, speak different varieties in different contexts. Um, going back to some of our slam poetry stuff, thinking through dialects, accented Englishes, um, this idea of what it means to be articulate. You can think about professionalism, how we show up in the classroom, how that intersects with the hidden curriculum, uh, what it means to speak with authority. Again, this is thinking through um, reflecting back on some of the slam poetry stuff that we were doing, thinking about linguistic hegemony or linguistic supremacy. So the idea that one language is at the top of this hierarchy. Uh, white supremacy classroom culture. So tying into some of the articles we just read for um, task five, this idea of code switching. Some of y'all watch those TED talks specific to code switching and language and context, um, this idea of linguistic profiling and discrimination and looking at identity and representation, what that looks like linguistically. Also, anything else, like I said, anything that's not on this list um, that you're interested in exploring further, you can go back and do so. So you're gonna go ahead and create a claim and these, slides should look familiar for you. So these slides are going to help you craft a claim that's 
part of an opinion. So you can start with like, I think, or I believe, and then provide some reasoning. I like to think of that as the why piece. So if someone says, I believe, and then someone else says why, then you provide, you fill in that blank with the, your reasoning. And then finally, some evidence. And what I really mean by evidence here is like pulling things from your, it says I say chart, or pulling things from your annotations. When I say things, I mean like direct quotes or examples from the text. So you could say, you know, um, in the TED Talk, this example uh, illustrates, and then that can tie in to whatever you're trying to assert or claim. Okay. Now, let's go back to task six. So overall, you're picking a theme. You know you're going to write some sort of claim, what you think about it. And then you're going to go back and cite multiple readings, videos, or TED Talks. So those can be from class, right? So anything we've read so far, so you can go ahead and click through to one task one, two, three, four, and five or anything else outside of this class that's sort of related content, um, you're welcome to add to your next paper. So from there, this is a little in a nutshell bit. So overall, what are we doing for task six? You're writing something where you're identifying a keyword concept or problem. You're utilizing quotes and examples from the assigned text to identify and analyze other authors' claims. So you're practicing those signal phrases, that citation. You're making an original argument or claim that, inc that includes evidence from those texts. And then you're going to propose a series of actionable solutions or next steps for your readers. So whoever is reading your work, if you're saying this is a real problem, like we um, need to talk about white supremacy culture in the classroom. Okay, if that's your claim, that white supremacy culture is in the classroom and it's a problem, then in your conclusion, I would like you to just briefly speak to how you would address it, okay? Um, so that's sort of that extension piece where I wanna hear your ideas. You can totally say I, you can use um, experiences, you can reference your own family like Tan does. Um, you can, yes, you can draw from your own experience and perspective as well as the text, but it should be both things happening. Then after that, we're going to do some peer review. So just like with task five, when Cody and I got in your papers and made comments. So if you don't have comments in your task five, that means you didn't share it with Cody or I before. Uh, like midday yesterday. So we weren't able to give you feedback. You can still share it, but now you're going to be doing feedback on each other's work peer to peer. So you're going to be in groups of three. It's going to be much harder if you don't have a model for what that feedback looks like since Cody or I was not able to offer you feedback on your papers yet. So just know if you got feedback already, you're going to go back to task five and model your feedback. So your partner's paper, you're gonna put feedback just like I did in your paper. Does that make sense? We'll talk a little bit more about peer review when I get into docs in just a moment. Then Cody is gonna take another look at task six after peer review, and then I'll take a look at task six after peer review. I also wanna point you back towards this handout with just some norms for writing about race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, and disability. So this gets to just some smaller details like language level stuff. So if you're wondering how you should phrase something or you're not quite sure how to describe a group in your paper or you're talking about um, some sort of marginalized identity and you wanna make sure um, that you're expressing that in a way that centers um, those folks, go ahead and reference this handout. That's going to help you. And then this is a gender inclusive language toolkit. So if you want to focus on like some of the um, slam poems, we're kind of focused on 
especially that authority piece or like what it means to be professional, then you might run into some um, gendered language that you might be interested in using throughout your paper. Um, somebody, when we were asking about policies for task five, did a really good job of naming like some policies that disproportionately impact, dress code policies that disproportionately disproportionately impacted um, female students. So here's some formatting information, just like task five, you're gonna kind of get all your ideas out there. I didn't do this as a quick write, add to format, but you can still think about it in that way, like get as much writing as you can down, then go back and edit. And here are our formatting guidelines should all be looking very similar to you now. And don't forget, you can use some of those sentence frames or sentence transitions from previous assignments. If you feel like you're getting stuck on this assignment, just pull up blog, uh, or sorry, task three or task four, and borrow some of those sentence frames and transitions to get you through. Then we're going to talk a little bit about adding a works cited page. I know we haven't, I haven't asked you to do that yet. Since you do have a link to all of your um, current sources, so you can go through Blackboard and pull from those links, just make sure that you're copying and pasting the URL from each of your um, texts and posting that at the bottom of your doc. So I'll show you what I'm looking for there as well when we get into docs in just a moment. And then here's some other helpful citation generators that most students are familiar with. Um, if you're not, Cody and I will jump in there and help you with that once you share your paper with me. Okay. The next piece I wanna talk about is joining a peer review group. So we're gonna attempt to join groups again. Um, so before you get started on your Google Docs, you're gonna jump down here and click on this join a peer review group. And I have all five groups available to me, but you should only have the group that you were assigned. So Cody spent some time yesterday getting this all organized for us. So thank you for that. And you should just have one group here. And then when you click in your group, it's gonna take you to this Google Drive. So you can see these are the group members for this Cherry folder. So once you're here in the folder, you're gonna go new, doc, create and share. Now, like everything you ever do in this class, make sure you write your first name, last name. So I'm writing mine, but you're going to write yours. Task six. And then here, we're going to make sure the shared settings. It should already be shared with me and Cody because we set this up. And then anyone with the link can edit. So the only people that will be able to edit are the other two people in your group. Those are the folks that are going to give you peer review. No one else can see this besides Cody, me, and your two group members who are going to be required to give you feedback. So it's really important that you go up to this blue shared box and change it to anyone with the link because only two people will have the link. So not everyone in Blackboard is going to be able to see this. Does that make sense? So just like with task four and task five, please do all this groundwork of sharing everything first. So you don't get to the point where you feel like you've done the assignment, but you haven't shared it or submitted it. Okay, so then from here, you can go ahead and draft your task six. So you're gonna use that prompt. Let's see if I can get back here, perfect. So feel free to copy and paste some of these assignment guidelines into your doc. And then you're just gonna pretty much write whatever you would like about one thing we've covered in class, make a claim about it, and then provide some sort of next steps or solutions for your readers. Sorry.
Okay, so let's get into docs then. Um, here's our doc. Let's get into docs. And from here, you're gonna go ahead, draft. And then on, let me double check the dates for you. Let's go up here to the calendar. So you're gonna draft. Do, do, do. What's today? Oh, I need to make a few changes to this calendar, but nothing's going to change for this over this weekend. Um, task six. Sorry, I need to update that. That's been updated somewhere else. So let me fix that for you. But you're going to start on that today. You're going to finish writing your draft and docs on Monday. So if you want to write over the weekend, you're welcome to, or else you're going to write out a full first draft by Monday. And then by Tuesday, you're going to be peer reviewing it. So I'll make another video just like this on Tuesday, walking you through the peer review guidelines. I'm going to update this calendar so you'll have some additional links. Sorry, there's a little fruit fly or something in here. And then Wednesday, Thursday, and then this is going to be a short reflection. Let me just update this real quick. So then Wednesday, Cody and I are going to be looking at your papers. At Thursday, you'll have some time to revise. And then you'll just do a brief video reflection, reflecting on your learning on Friday. And that's our last day. Cool. I think we covered everything for task six. Like I said, I'll be updating this um, calendar. Let me know if you have any questions. Please share tasks four and five with me if you haven't already. So to do that, you would go, let's say this is your task or doc, once you create it, just make sure that it's shared with me and that I can edit, make sure it's shared with Cody and that Cody can edit. All right, that's all I have for you today. So um, good luck on task six, have a great weekend and I will see you on Tuesday for the peer review tutorial. Okay, bye-bye.